want to read our text, opening text this afternoon, which comes to us from Acts chapter 16, verses 20 to 23. King James Version, the Bible says, And they brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city, and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. The multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. When they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Continuing verse 24 says, who having received such a charge, trust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, the Bible says, Paul and Silas, they prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, the Bible says, all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loose. I want to make it clear this afternoon that that is the only way to defeat despair and darkness and Satan and his demons. We have to sing praises like Paul and Silas. They had every opportunity to complain to murmur, to cry, to despair. Matter of fact, they were not only in darkness spiritually. When I say spiritually, I'm referring to, or let's say emotionally, the fact that they were in this despairing situation. They had just been beaten, the Bible says, with many stripes. Therefore, I put it to you that their skin was, was, was wailed up if we would put it that way, they, they were suffering from bleeding from the sores or rather the wounds that were inflicted, inflicted because of the many beatings. They were in pain, they were in agony, they were fastened to the stocks so they could not move, they were deep down in the dungeon, they were in physical darkness. And they were, there was every reason for Paul and Silas to be in despair. I'm sure human nature wanted to despair. I am very sure human nature wanted to be discouraged. But instead, Paul and Silas prayed. That's the first step, they prayed. And as they prayed and connected their minds to heaven, they began to sing praises. There was no choir. There was no instrumental, no piano, keyboard, harp no instrument at all there was not in a church setting in a congregation they were in a place that never heard praise a place that's not used to praise a place that did not encourage praise they were in the deepest depths of the dungeon a place where men disappeared and they were in deep darkness where man waited for their executioner for death was on their heels where the criminals were the no good and the hopeless and within that place Paul and Silas whom carried the light for Jesus is the light of the world and they had an experience with Jesus therefore they knew the light therefore the light was in them and that light was the light of men and that was is Jesus and therefore instead of allowing the darkness around them to encompass them Paul and Silas sang praises and prison bars shook and, and, and bolts were loose and not just for them but for the other prisoners there was an earthquake caused by the power of their praise I subscribe to you that as tribulation comes as trial come, you must sing. And as it gets deeper, let your praise get louder. I want to read what this quote says from Manuscript 65, 1901. Also found in Evangelism 498, paragraph 2. Here is what it says. And 
He is our example. I love this quote. When Christ was a child, like these children here and any other child, he was tempted to sin. Let that be clear. Jesus was tempted to sin. He came as our example, but he did not yield to temptation. We want to know how. As he grew older, he was tempted like you and I. But the songs, oh, the praises, the songs his mother had taught him to sing came into his mind. And he would lift his voice in praise. And before his companions were aware of it, they would be singing. Oh, the melody of heaven. They would be singing with him. Listen, listen. God wants us to use every facility which heaven has provided for resisting the enemy. And what is one of those main facilities for resisting Satan? It is singing the praises. The songs that Mary had taught Jesus, when he was tempted, he would sing. Sing praises unto God. Sing like Jesus. When we are tempted, we'll sing like Jesus. When temptations come in like a flood, we will sing like Jesus. We must remember the praises, church. When we are in the deepest depths of temptation, we must remember that Jesus sang, so must we sing. I want you to read this text with me, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 19. And speaking to yourselves in what? Psalms and hymns and what? Spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Church, we're going to sing. Church, we know trials are coming. We know tribulations are coming. We know soon some of God's people, not very far from now, will be in prisons like Paul and Silas. We will be barricaded for our faith. But what are we going to do? We're going to sing. When they fastened Paul and Silas to the stocks, they couldn't move. They couldn't shift. They could go nowhere. But they could open their mouth and sing. We're going to sing. Sorry. We're going to sing. We're going to praise. And that's why I want to encourage us this morning to learn the songs of Zion. Let the hymnal be in our frontal lobe. Let us learn the songs that we ought to sing to lift our praises to heaven. We will sing and conquer our despair and our darkness. We must sing. We cannot be charged for singing. We must sing. It drives away the darkness and despair. We must sing because it's going to shake the spiritual bars of hell. We must sing because Satan cannot take our praise. We must sing and we will sing like Jesus. Speaking to ourselves in songs, huh, I'm happy today. In hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in our heart.